my name is Tabitha Holman. It is an honor to come to you today. I want to talk to the young people about being a follower of Jesus. Amen. Jesus says in Matthew 16, 24, if anyone wants to be my follower, they must deny themselves, take up their cross daily, and follow me. So who was Jesus talking to in Matthew? He was talking to his known disciples. He was talking to the people who genuinely wanted to follow him. Amen. See, this particular verse was a call to his disciples. So I'm here today to make a call to you. I want to ask you, will you follow Jesus? You see... You must let go of all the spiritual feelings you think that comes along with following Jesus. And you must decide to make a commitment. A commitment is not going back to the way things used to be. Paul said in Philippians 3.14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So Paul said, I press. What does that mean? It means you commit yourself to following Jesus. Nothing else will do. You answer the call. Paul said it is a high calling. So you know what that means? That means it isn't for everyone. It's for you. You and only you have to decide whether you are going to follow Jesus or not. You are the one who has to make the commitment. There is no difference in deciding to follow a crowd or deciding to follow Jesus. But you must be the one to make a commitment that you rather follow Jesus than follow the crowd. Amen? See, when you are a disciple of God, that means you are marked by God. That means that you are set aside. You are set apart for His purposes. You are meant for His use. You see, you find that in Jesus that Jesus is the only way, that Jesus is the only truth, that Jesus is the only life. There is no other way. There is no other truth. There is no other life. There is only one answer to this life, and that answer is Jesus Christ. So you must make a decision if you want to follow Jesus in this life and the life that's been given to you or not. So what's the first thing that you must do? Jesus said, you must deny yourself. <laughs> Uh-oh. Some of us just don't want to deny ourselves, do we? Sometimes this old flesh just feels too good for us to deny it. But I'm here to tell you today. I'm here to bring you news today that if you want to be a true follower of Jesus Christ, if you want to commit your life to Jesus Christ, if you want to be his disciple, then you must deny yourself. No one in this life wants to hear that. No one wants to hear, especially in this generation, that we have to deny ourselves, right? Because we don't want to live a selfless life. We want to be selfish. We want things to be all about me. Me, 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 me. But if you're going to be a follower of Jesus, then you're going to have to deny your selfish ways. You're going to have to learn that it's not about pleasing you, it's about pleasing Him. And you've got to determine within yourself that you will be committed and do the things of God. That you will be committed and that you will answer the call of God on your life. You are the one who has to choose to follow Him. I tell people all the time, the greatest thing Jesus ever did for me was set me free from me. Jesus saved me from me. I know that God is real because I was once a sinner, but now I am saved and I am a daughter and I know who I am in Christ. And it's because I decided to follow Jesus. I decided to lay my life down. I decided to deny myself. I decided to pick up my cross and follow him. I let go of my selfish ways. I let go of my sinful desires. I quit focusing on me and what I wanted and what my agenda and my plans were and the sinful lifestyle that I was living. And I said yes to the author and creator of my 
my life and it's the best decision that I have ever made and I'm here to encourage everyone that is listening to me follow Jesus take your life get committed get dedicated and decide to follow Jesus make a commitment it will be the best decision that you have ever made amen so you got to understand that denying yourself isn't easy it's going to take sacrifices the bible says in first samuel 15 22 that obedience is better than sacrifice so what does that mean it means that your obedience is evidence that you are a true follower of jesus christ because let me tell you if you are not going to follow Jesus, your life is evidence that you're not following Jesus. And if you are following Jesus, your evidence is in your life is evidence that you are following Jesus. It's evident. It's evident if God is the first in your life or not. It is evident if Jesus is center of your life or not. So back to obedience is better than sacrifice. You see, the more you begin to follow him, the easier it becomes. You know, it don't start off easy. You know, the more you go, the more you press, is the more you grow. He said, I press for the high calling. So the more you go, the more you grow. So go towards Jesus. Run towards Jesus. Follow after him. That's the way you're going to grow your life. That's the way your life is going to go if you decide to follow him. You see, transformation doesn't happen overnight. It is a process. It is a daily process process denying yourself does not happen overnight it's a process it's a continuation a lifelong process of denying yourself denying the things that you want and saying yes to the things that he wants it takes time to let go of the junk in your life and to learn that there is treasure right see when we follow jesus he trades the junk for treasure and I don't know about you but life is filled with enough junk give me the treasure you see you got to learn to let go of the hurt and the bitterness and the pain and the confusion and all the broken promises and and your defeated mindsets and your so-called friends you got to learn that things that should have happened and they didn't happen and and the regrets and the shames and and the hurt and the lies and the deceit and just all the mess that comes along in this life you've got to learn to let things go and surrender it to the cross see when you surrender it to Jesus when you let go of all this mess in the world your mess becomes his message right your mess becomes his message so when you deny yourself and you follow jesus right your mess becomes his message you become the messenger to his message of your mess did you hear that so when you deny yourself and you follow him and he takes all that mess that you've been a part of all that selfishness all of that pride all of that envy all of that sinful desires all the things that this world has to offer that just makes you hurt and mad and angry and bitter and sad and depressed and anxious it's everything that this world has to offer jesus takes it and your mess and he gives you a message and so he makes you the messenger of your mess by spreading his message. I mean, I just think that's an amazing thing. It's a divine exchange. We no longer have to carry our mess. We begin to be healed. We begin to be transformed. We begin to give up these things and receive these things. So instead of being bitter, we receive joy. Instead of being depressed, we, we receive life. Instead of being mad and upset and angry all the time, we receive peace and patience and self-control you know and love and goodness and mercy you know there's just so many things that god wants to exchange from ourself to be focused on him so he takes us and we follow him and he begins to mold us and change us from the inside out and the more we go the more we grow so the more we go towards jesus the more we grow like jesus amen and that's what we need in this life i don't want the mess give me the message can i get an amen can you can you say that i don't want the mess god give me the message make me your messenger i want to be a follower of jesus christ i want to be a disciple 
for your kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. He says to deny yourself and to take up your cross daily and follow him. So you must see that committing yourself to Jesus isn't a one time and done deal. No, might as well hang that one up. It's a daily commitment. You daily deny your flesh. You daily deny the things of this world and say yes to the things of God. You daily deny things that have nothing to do with God. You deny it. You see, I say all the time that if God ain't in it, I don't want it. If it don't look like God, it ain't going to act like God, it ain't going to say what God says, and it ain't going to do what God says. So if God ain't in it, I don't want it. If it don't look like Jesus, then it ain't appealing to me. It's not going to catch my eyes. I don't, I don't want the things of the world. I don't want this mess that this life has to offer. I want the good things in life. I want the blessings of life. I want to know that when I go through storms, I will mount up on wings like eagles and I will soar above what's trying to take me out. I want to know that there's an overcomer on the inside of me and I am more than a conqueror because of who Christ Jesus is in me. I want to know that when things try to take me out that I serve a resurrected king and the same resurrection power that raised him up from the dead is alive and on the inside of me that's what I want and if it takes me denying myself if it takes me denying my anger if it takes me denying my depression if it takes me denying my bitterness if it takes me denying me running out and acting like a fool then I'll take it I'll take it mold me Jesus make me new Jesus creating me a new heart that I might not sin against you Jesus I want it all amen I want everything in this life that God has to offer I am tired of the devil coming in still killing and destroying and taking what belongs to God's people and the only way we're going to get that is if we start following him and we start chasing after the things that he's chasing after and if we start doing the things that he's doing and if we start saying the things that he's saying I want what Jesus has to offer not what this world has to offer can I get a loud amen on that Thank you, Jesus. You know, when I was sitting over here preparing this sermon, I got to thinking. I said, we got to quit going around and blaming the devil. Here we are blaming the devil on every conflict in our lives. And I just have to come to break the news today that if we don't learn in this life, we're going to get hemmed up. We are going to get called up. We're going to get hemmed up. We are going to get in trouble. We are going to get in conflict. We are going to get in a mess if we do not start learning. We really are. We're going to find ourselves defeated if we don't find ourselves delivered. Amen. So we got to quit going around blaming the devil. Not everything that happens to us in life is the devil's fault. Can I just be honest and say that sometimes it's us? It's us that causes things to happen to us, right? So, haven't you heard that saying, I can do bad all by myself? <laughs> and that is the truth. There is some truth behind that quote. I don't need you, and I don't need the devil, and I don't need the minions around me to influence me to do bad. I can do bad and influence myself bad all by myself. But I am tired of being influenced by the kingdom of darkness, and I want to be influenced by the things that God has to offer. Amen. So we're going around and we're giving the devil too much credit. Okay. We are going to have to pay back some of that credit that we've been charging in the devil's name. Did you hear that? All this credit we're giving the devil, charging his name to it, we're going to have to pay it back. So let's start today. Quit blaming things on the devil. Get some responsibility, get some morals, get some values, get some characteristics, get some virtue, get some integrity, and start disciplining yourself, and start being accountable to yourself, start living a selfless life instead of being selfish, and quit blaming the devil. Take some credit for yourself and what you're doing and allowing in your own life. It's not always the devil. Quit blaming him. So... Just to make this clear, Jesus said, deny yourself. Pick up your cross daily and follow him. So what I want to talk about is, what is the cross? Okay, the only way I know to explain what your cross is, 
is to give you an understanding of his cross. The cross of Jesus is what he would suffer, be rejected, and die on. Listen, the cross of Jesus is what he would suffer, be rejected, and die on. So I know you're like, wait a minute now. You're over here telling me to follow Jesus and you all pumped up and you got me all pumped up. And now you're telling me I'm going to have to go through the same thing, the suffering, the rejection, the dying. Yeah. Yes, you are. The cross is execution. Just as serious as Jesus was to give his life to die for you so that you could live is just as serious as the call of God and the committing yourself and the denying of yourself so that you will follow him, so that you will live your life for him. He died for you so that you could live for him. So being a follower of Jesus is a radical commitment. Okay, do I have any radical believers watching this? Can I get an amen? Because I know I'm a radical believer because when you follow Jesus and you're committed to Jesus, it's something that you just cannot rationalize in your head. You just cannot begin to play heart games and mind games with the cause of Christ. You see, following Jesus is a genuine commitment by a true believer of Jesus Christ. It is saying, here I am, Lord. I want to be a disciple. I want to be fit for the kingdom of God. I want to be used for the kingdom of God. I want to be commitment. I am determined to be a follower of Jesus. I want to listen and obey your commands. I want to deny everything that is not of you, and I want to say yes to everything that is you. I want to pick up my cross daily, and I want to surrender my life daily because I know in the end, What you got is better than anything that I will ever give up. Amen. A disciple comes at a cost. Discipleship comes at a cost. Following Jesus is going to cost you something. I'm not here to sugarcoat nothing and pat you on the back and tell you everything's going to be all right. Because everything in this life is not all right, okay? It's never going to be all right. Until you put Jesus first in your life, until you get in alignment with him and he begins to shape and mold and make all things work together for your good. But until you get in that alignment with him, everything's going to be a mess. It's, it's going to be feeling like you have natural disasters all the time coming into you. So you got to realize that he is the anchor in the storm and that when the light storms of life come to you he anchors you and he holds you down and you're able to overcome anything that this world has to offer so yes being a disciple is going to cost you something in luke 14 25 33 jesus was talking to the crowds and he says if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and his mother his wife and his children his brothers and his sisters yes even their own life such a person cannot be my disciple disciple and whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple suppose one of you wants to build a tower won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it for if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it everyone who sees you will ridicule you saying this person began to build and wasn't even able to finish it so suppose a king is about to go a war against another king won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able to get 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000 if he is not able he will not send them while the other is still along the way off and he will ask for terms of peace in the same way those who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples so what is jesus saying here he is plainly saying the cost comes with the commitment you have got to count the cost if you're going to be committed to him and like i said no it isn't easy but i can guarantee you and i can testify that in my own life Following Jesus is the best decision that I have ever made. And how do I know? Matthew 16, 25, and 27 says this. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life from me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world and lose their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come 
in his father's glory with his angels and then he will reward each person according to what they have done what am I trying to tell you today? I am trying to tell you to follow Jesus. We must follow Jesus because he is the only way to life. Finding him is finding you. And you will never discover who you are if you do not first make a decision to discover who Jesus is. So in closing, I just want to say a quick prayer today, Lord God. I just ask that we would surrender our lives to following Jesus, God. That we will make a daily commitment to surrender our lives to say yes to the things of you, God, and no to the things of this world. May you bless this word. May you bless the hearers, Lord God, and may you bless us to be doers of this word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you.